Hello everyone and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and today I'm coming to you with a video about some specific readings that I have done recently. As I mentioned before on the channel, this is something, uh, the type of video that I've been wanting to make more of. And um, there was a hashtag uh, lately, uh, maybe in the last month or so, um, that was kind of started by Sylvain of Sylvain's Deadly Sins and Meg over at Rose Honey Ritual. Um, Sylvain was talking about a spread for general readings, which is what this is, and um, he was trying to encourage other people to try this out. Um, now Sylvain does not take full credit for this. It's not an, a completely original idea for a tarot spread, but it's one that he's kind of played around with and tweaked, and one um, that is further tweakable depending on your tastes. Um, so uh, once he posted his, his video, uh, Meg then joined in and suggested that we do um, response videos to this and show other examples with other decks. And I really like this idea for a hashtag. And the, the uh, name for this that she came up with was that nine card spread, you know, that one. Um, so, but it's, it's a general nine card spread that incorporates um, elements from the French cross, which is a classic uh, kind of fortune tellery French um, uh, reading spread. And then it has um, the addition of the four elements. So I'm gonna walk you through the positions and then walk you through a sample reading. And I just wanna quickly mention one of the decks, uh, the first deck I'm gonna use today um, is Tarot of the Sweet Twilight. This is a deck uh, designed by Christina Benintende. I think that's how you pronounce her last name. Uh, this is produced by Los Carabeo. It's um, still in print and ready available from major uh, tarot booksellers. And this was a gift from a viewer. Ange over at Tiny Trinkets and Tarot sent me this after I had posted in a, a group that she's a part of um, looking for a copy of this deck to swap. And she was nice enough to just buy me a copy and send it to me. Um, so thank you, Ange. It's, it's a great deck. Um, it's a really good one for this time of year, I think. The color palette is very autumnal. It's kind of got, um, you know, Tim Burton-y kind of Halloween vibes without being explicitly themed. So we'll take a look at how it reads in just a second here. So I want to review quickly the positions of this nine card spread. And um, I apologize that some of the cards are a little cut off, um, but this is as far out as I can get with my camera. So um, this spread has essentially three parts to it. So the first part is the leftmost center and rightmost cards. And these could be um, different positions depending on what kind of a question you're doing or what you feel the querent might be really interested in based on your kind of initial conversation with them. Um, so it could be past, present, future. It could be uh, situation advice outcome. It could be any number of those kind of three card spreads. So you can think of these three cards as like a, a built-in three card spread on their own. Uh, further to that, um, Sylvain says he likes to use the elemental components in this uh, order. So he's got fire, water, air, and earth, or wands, um, cups, swords, and pentacles, or coins. So that's what kind of the four corners do. And then the uppermost and the bottommost cards, again, could be situational. They could be um, uh, different kind of spread positions, depending on either your own preferences as a reader or maybe the kind of question that you're asking. Um, for a general spread, I might be uh, tempted to look at something like what uplifts you um, and then what supports you underneath. So that's kind of the framework for this spread. Let's take a look at uh, this specific reading that I did for a friend. All right, so here's our cards laid out again in this spread. And we'll start again um, with this middle row. So when I laid these out initially and I asked my friend um, which cards specifically were standing out to her, which images, um, she mentioned that the High Priestess card right here, which is in the elemental fire position in this spread, um, was standing out. And that was an interesting contrast to me. Um, you know, a very introspective, watery, um, 
you know, uh, kind of slow moving card in a fiery, energized kind of position. Um, and I didn't know what to make of that on its own, but I did kind of make a mental note about that. And what I just said was, okay, that's interesting. We'll come back, we'll come back to that. Um, and so I started out with this middle row and here we have the lovers. Um, we have the uh, 10 of swords and we have the ace of swords. And I did kind of read this as past, present and future. So coming from a, a, a place of, um, you know, solid partnership or, you know, satisfaction, that kind of thing. Um, into a place of letting go. I think of the Ten of Swords, uh, the Tens in any suit really being about a finality, a culmination. So ready to move on and then to a new start. Um, and that kind of uh, triggered my friend to think, oh, okay, this isn't a reading that's about an external situation. This is really an internal situation that's been going on for her. Um, and so without getting into a ton of detail, she had recently read kind of a, a self-help book um, that was talking about perspective and how we think of ourselves, how we label the kind of people that we are. You know, I'm a this kind of a person, I'm a that kind of a person. Um, and and the, the labels and the situations that other people put onto us. Um, and she's always been a very kind of responsive person, you know, allowing that to happen, allowing other people to kind of um, help define, you know, who she is in the world. And um, this spread overall is kind of telling her, yeah, you know, that may have been the case in the past where you relied heavily on other people's um, suggestions or opinions or, or you know, um, requests for, for you to be a certain way or to be a certain kind of a person. But at this time of your life, um, you, can, you can kind of move on from that and go ahead. And that really made sense then uh, in the place of this High Priestess card here in this Fiery Wands position, um, you know, as not just being a, a passive kind of a card, but actually taking ownership of your identity um, and recentering your, uh, your spiritual center in a new direction, in a, in a place where you can feel good and passionate about it. Um, we talked about letting go of feeling um, feeling stuck, you know, and, and so you've got the Ten of Wands in the cups. So we're talking about your emotional state, again, letting go of kind of holding on to that. And also um, the imagery here with these are like dolls and they're all on puppet strings, you know, so, so letting go of that kind of emotional state of being pulled by someone else, being controlled by someone else, not in a bad way, not in like a you know, an emotionally um, uh, abusive relationship or anything like that. It's nothing, nothing so extreme, but just again, kind of giving into other people's whims or desires or what they want you to be doing or, or that kind of thing. So, um, so that was, you know, that kind of followed along with this story here that the rest of the cards were talking about. In the analytical position up here, we have the devil. So this would be the air card. Um, and I saw this as kind of a warning not to fall back into the, the old habits. You know, it, it can be comfortable, even though, um, even though maybe my friend wants to move in a new direction about how she views herself in the world. Um, it is easy to fall back on our old habits, you know, to be uncomfortably comfortable, um, essentially. And I see the devil here as like self-soothing behavior that doesn't actually get you anywhere, that, that keeps you stuck in your old patterns that you're trying to let go of and, you know, cut the strings and all this. So, um, so that was an appropriate card and really being like mentally conscious of that, right? So here we're looking at like emotionally, I feel tied down. And then I'm going to try to consciously change my mind, consciously change my mental patterns. She mentioned using a new phrase for, for what, uh, what this encompasses. So instead of I am, I am this way, I am that way, I am this kind of person, it's I experience this. I experience this emotion. I experience this relationship with this person. I experience this experience with myself, you know, but it doesn't mean that you're locked into being a certain kind of person. So, uh, you know, again, this is just like, you know, keep, keep going with that and use, um, use your mental prowess to not get stuck in, in what hasn't been serving you. Um, and then the two of swords really making a conscious decision. So again, being pragmatic that down here, we're in our earth, uh, position and we have the two of swords. So being pragmatic, really weighing, uh, each choice that you're going to be making 
And um, again, tying back with this uh, devil card in the mental position, um, thinking through uh, your practical decisions. Um, so you have this, this like an air, you know, an air card in an earth suit. So thinking through your practical decisions, thinking through before you respond, thinking through how you're thinking about something, um, you know, being able to recognize those mental traps that, um, or patterns or old habits that you're falling back into. And then again, coming out the, the end of this spread into the Ace of Swords, seeing that new, um, new mental framework and, and nurturing that. Um, in this spread, um, I did initially, I have to tell a story on myself, I did initially forget the top and bottom cards. So that was the summary of the reading that I actually gave to my friend. But this spread would ordinarily have these top and bottom cards. Um, what I gave her, I guess, was this, the seven card, that seven card spread, which kind of worked. Um, but then I just decided to draw two more cards in random, and I actually think these two cards do speak to the rest of this spread really well. So down here, being grounded with the Knight of Chalices, you know, what supports you, um, this kind of romantic idea of, you know, how things are going to turn out. Um, maybe, maybe it supports you, maybe it pulls you down, maybe this holds you and anchors you. So being aware that, again, it's easy to fall back into old emotional patterns and um, understanding that. It's easy to romanticize how easy it's going to be to change your way of thinking, too. So that's something to look out for. And then the Queen of Swords, again, kind of just treating everything with like a dispassionate clarity um, and really owning uh, who you are. Um, it's interesting to me that both of these cards have have fire in them, either, even though neither one is necessarily associated with fire. I guess, you know, the flames of hell um, comes up in the devil card, kind of, but it's not, it's not like that. Nobody's being tortured by fire. I just see this as like this energy, you know, so seizing on this energy um, and to, to get to that new uh, emotional state or new way of thinking about yourself in the world. So yeah, so that was a really good reading. My friend, you know, thought it was spot on. Um, of course, you know, having a conversation with someone while you're reading for them um, kind of draws you down the path towards accuracy, I think, or something that clicks in the mind if you can have a conversation. Um, having cold readings where the other person won't respond at all is, is much more difficult, but this was a great reading. And kind of once we figured out what the what the question really was, you know, I laid these out as if it was a general reading, but um, once we kind of figured out that this is about her internal mental and emotional state and not events that are going on around her, um, then the reading kind of clicked into place from there. So I hope you found that one helpful, and I'm going to show you one more with a different deck. Okay, so here's our next reading for another person, different day. Um, again, just an open reading. And uh, we'll start here again with the three center cards. So we have the Nine of Swords in the past position, the Hanged One in the present, and then the Two of Pentacles in the future. Um, or the next, you know, this could be next steps, this could be advice. Um, again, however you want to read this, or depending on sort of what the client is coming to you with. Um, and I asked her again what, uh, what stood out to her. And really these two, well, these three cards together, um, she also reads tarot and so, you know, significant cards come up and she, you know, already has kind of ideas about what they might relate to, but she liked this rendering. She had not seen this deck before. Um, this is the Mara Loon tarot and it is available on Make Playing Cards. I'll link uh, this deck below in case you're interested in it. Um, but she liked the Magician card because of the, the kind of the heart, um, lit up here, you know, a approaching a situation wholeheartedly. Um, and then the four of pentacles being this kind of like seeds that you've planted that are now coming, you know, starting to support you in some way. Um, and I liked, I liked both of those too. Um, so again, we start off with the nine of swords here. Um, and that she said, you know, really resonated with how she's been feeling and particularly how she's been feeling about her work. So she's a, um, a business owner and it makes sense to me that this reading could be about work because we have so many pentacle co pentacles cards. We have four out of the nine um, in our earth suit. And so that, that certainly makes sense. So feeling a lot of trepidation and anxiety around, um, around her business and her work in her business uh, lately. And what I told her was that, you know, signs looked good. If she takes a pause and kind of takes restock with the, uh, the hanged one here in the middle and gives herself some space to just really look at the situation in a, in a pragmatic 
and calm and clear way, we have the Queen of Swords here as well, um, that she can then kind of move on and re reprioritize. Um, and that seemed to, to resonate with her as well. So again, we have the Magician up here in the fire suit. So really um, finding, I, you know, I connected that with like finding your passion again about what you love about your business. Um, or maybe there's a new direction or a new project you could take on within your business that would kind of spark that joy for you again. Um, relying on your emotional center or the things that ground you emotionally so that emotions aren't playing uh, too much of a role and feeling making you feel this anxiety more, um, but kind of finding ways to ground yourself emotionally and you know move on from this anxiety um, would be helpful. And so again, the grounding, the hanged ones, kind of like take a pause, you know, just take a beat. Um, now here in the, the Three of Pentacles, this is interesting because I do see this also as a collaboration card, especially in this, um, in this setup. So possibly what will lift you up out of this, um, this anxiety-fueled state and, and get you inspired again is to have some kind of collaboration with someone else. Um, whether that's just a conversation with a friend, maybe that's a new business venture with someone else, um, you know, bringing, uh, working with another local artist to bring some of their, you know, their products into your store or something like that um, could be really helpful and could kind of re-energize you uh, in a way. And then other things to support you, again, clear and pragmatic thinking. So it's interesting that we have the Queen of Swords here in our Earth suit. We had a Swords card in the last um, spread in the in the Earth suit. It was a different one. Um, but again, you know, just, just being a very, a very clear with yourself about your priorities and your plans and what's going to work for you um, with any kind of change or new direction that you're going to be making. And realizing that you are the boss, you know, that you have attained some uh, some level of a success in your business and remembering that. Um, so, you know, it's interesting that we have we have a, a pentacles card in the um, swords position and then a swords card in the pentacles position. Right. This is the air or the, you know, the mental capacity um, spread position. And this is the pragmatic spread position. And. Um, so these two together, I think, really talk about being grounded and practical in the way that you're thinking about work and any kind of new direction that you might uh, might want to take. You know, how is that going to impact your bottom line? Um, how is that going to be practical for you to implement? You know, what, what new direction is that really going to take you in? And then again, we have the devil um, in this spread, not, not up here. Um, but down here, and uh, I'll just show you the whole card since um, I can't get it on the screen right now. But this devil has a, a string, you know, a rope that they're kind of holding on to. So again, we talk about attachments. We talk about being pulled in a certain direction, you know, and how it's it's hard to change old habits. It's hard to, to get away from things that aren't serving you. Um, and with that kind of pulling you down, you know, in this lower position, um, I would I would say that this was like a an obstacle kind of... Um, position in this particular reading. And so, you know, how can you get over this obstacle? How can you um, get away from this um, being pulled in a direction you don't want to go or, you know, pulled into um, this anxiety or kind of mental state that you don't want to be in? And I think the way to do that is to kind of implement this, this plan here, you know. Um, these are the things that are going to lift you up and support you and help you get to um, just a rebalanced and you know calm uh, approach. Um, it doesn't mean that it's not going to be busy. Um, you might have multiple things that you need to change or, or you know things that you have to juggle. but um, but the outcome, I think, is going to help you feel more balanced and less like this. So when there's that kind of um, arc, I guess, I, I, I don't like to say that tarot, you know, tarot cards are bad or good on their own, but here you go from this emotional state to this one, just by looking at the people's faces, I, I feel like that's, you know, really looking at what's been going on lately, what you can do about it and where that's going to lead you. So I really like this spread. Um, I want to thank Sylvain for calling my attention to it and you know giving us a great reading example i will again link his um 
his original video down below. And then as well as the hashtag, if you search um, that nine card spread on YouTube, you can find other responses. And I look forward to um, getting caught up. I haven't watched all of those yet, but uh, seeing other people's um, example spreads with this, uh, I think it's a cool tool. And it's you know gonna give me a good basis for a general reading that I can give. I'm gonna start um, offering some readings locally to um, to people in person and those are going to be paid readings um, and often people do come in you know that have never had a reading before so I feel like a spread like this gives you enough cards that you can sit and talk for you know a good long while and really kind of explain and walk people through them um, so they feel like they're getting their money's worth they're getting like some you know tangible um, information that they can then act on uh, at the same time, it's not overwhelming. You know, it's not it's not too much information. It's not super complicated. And if you can just kind of remember that there's three components to this spread, I think it's easy to memorize. So again, you've got the, the three card spread in the middle. You've got the elemental spread here on the corners. And then you just have the, you know, like what's lifting you up and what's supporting you or what's lifting you up and what do you have to overcome? Um, or, you know, whatever you want to call these two positions, you can play around with it. But um, but if you can kind of remember those three components to this spread, I think it's a really good one um, to be able to just whip out of your pocket if you if you need to um, for, for a general reading. Um, if you had a specific question, of course, you could always, you know, keep the elementals and then kind of change what these positions are to make them more of um, more targeted towards uh, the specific question. So, you know, situation advice outcome or something like that. But yeah, let me know what you think. Um, if you try this out uh, and you don't have a YouTube channel or you don't make videos, please feel free to leave a comment below and just, you know, let me how, what, know how it went. Um, and if you do uh, make a video, please, uh, please tag me, please tag Sylvain. I'm sure he'd like to see um, people putting this uh, spread into use and, and taking it for a spin. So thank you again for joining me for this and I will see you again very soon.